Hi, I'm Shelley, and I'm here at the Smithsonian's National Zoo and Conservation Biology Institute in Washington, DC. Today, we are visiting the zoo's veterinary hospital to learn about some unusual careers. Before we meet our guests, I'm gonna give you three clues. Can you guess what they do? Number one, they visit animals and animals visit them. Number two, they work with every animal in the zoo from catfish to elephants. And number three, using math and technology is vital to monitoring animals' vitals. Can you guess what they do? Let's go meet our guests. Hi, I'm Katherine Hope, one of the associate veterinarians here at the Smithsonian National Zoo in Washington, DC. Uh, part of my job as an associate vet at the National Zoo is to ensure the health of our animals in the collection. Hi, my name is David Olson. I work at the National Zoo here in Washington, D.C. Um, I'm a veterinary technician uh, here at the hospital, which basically means I am kind of the nurse of the hospital. So what's the difference between a vet and a vet tech? As a veterinarian does the diagnosis and prescribes the treatment. Technicians are basically here to get all of the samples that the veterinarians need to do that work. Today, we've brought Peter, the panda, uh, up to the hospital to demonstrate for you how we might uh, monitor and take care of an animal if we have it at the hospital. When you go to the doctor, you might get your blood pressure taken. Um, we put blood pressure monitoring on our animals when they're asleep so that we make sure that the blood that's within their system is getting to all of their vital organs. Similarly, again, to you going to the doctor's office, this little gadget that we just put on Peter's ear is a pulse oximeter, and that measures the amount of oxygen that is in the bloodstream. So when you go to the doctor, uh, they will have you stick your finger in a little white sleeve that looks, that does exactly what this pulse oximeter does on our animal's ear. Um, it doesn't always go on the animal's ear, it goes on whatever most, most hairless part of the animal we can find because hair tends to obstruct the reading of the pulse oximeter. And then we'll do an exam. The veterinarian will do the physical exam. So physical exam, we try to do systematically. So we start at the head, we go down through the body, we make sure we listen to the chest, we feel his tummy, we make sure all the joints are moving. This is an ophthalmoscope. So just like at the doctor's office, when they peek in your eye, we use an ophthalmoscope to look in our animal's eyes make sure their eyes are healthy. We'll then use the otoscope head of the ophthalmoscope handle to look in their ears, make sure we don't see any gunk in their ears. Um, we will look in their mouth. A lot of the times if they need a dental procedure done, we'll call our veterinary technician over and they'll do a cleaning for us. We like to check their teeth out because it's pretty hard to check a teeth out on the animal like a tiger when they're awake because I don't really want to stick my arm in a tiger's mouth. That's not going to be a lot of fun for me or the tiger. But a lot of times it's up to the technicians to clean those teeth and then we talk about the problems to the veterinarians of what we saw while we were in there and then they'll take a look for themselves. I will listen to their heart and their lungs, to make sure that everything sounds just as it should. I have this monitoring equipment set up on Peter and that tells me that the heart is functioning well in some ways, but it can't tell me everything. So I still have to listen and then we will get radiographs or x-rays. So we're gonna take an x-ray on Peter the Panda now. And what that involves is using one of these plates. You probably, if you've ever had an x-ray done, you've seen these. This is the plate that takes the image from the x-ray machine and then puts it onto the computer so the doctors can look at it. And then that's gonna shoot the x-rays right through Peter's leg, through the table and onto the plate. And then what happens is it communicates with our computer here. Now this is a sand cat image, not Peter the panda. When we're looking at an x-ray, if you see all these white areas, that's looking at the different bones, like here's his skull. And you can see some of the softer parts like his eyes and mouth. You can see his teeth up here. These are his arm bones. Here's all of his ribs. The black area is air. And then the other gray areas are tissues, like our heart, our intestines, our stomach. And the veterinarians use this to look inside the animal to see if there's anything wrong. And then once they're, we're done doing a full exam, we will usually get some blood work on our animals. 
So this means we take a needle and a syringe and we um, get some blood out of their veins so that we can send it down to the lab and um, just check to make sure that all of their organs really are functioning the way that they're supposed to be. Pandas, oftentimes here, we don't actually need to put them on the anesthesia table to get blood from them. Our giant pandas and several of our other species of animals are trained to get blood while they're awake. So that means that our giant pandas will sit in a little chute and they'll stick their arm out for us and we can just get blood straight from their arm while they're getting fed treats and biscuits and honey and juice. <laughs> and they're perfectly happy to give us samples. So we don't always have to get the animals to go to sleep to get blood from them, which is really helpful. Finally, oftentimes we'll have to use the ultrasound machine. So this is our ultrasound machine. The ultrasound machine is very good at showing us soft tissue details, which means when we're looking at something like your tummy or your abdomen, the ultrasound will help us look more carefully between the different organs in the abdomen. So we can look at specific organs and see if there's something specifically wrong with them. So that's how we do a thorough exam on our animals at the National Zoo. How did you become a veterinarian and a veterinary technician? I've never heard of a zoo veterinary technician or a veterinary technicians in general. Uh, it's kind of a new career. I was thinking about going on to veterinarian school, um, but I was intrigued by the veterinary technician. I thought that might be a good stepping stone. So I went to a specialized school called uh, the Veterinary Technician Institute in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and I got an associate's degree in uh, veterinary technician, basically, and that allows me to do the job that I do. To become a veterinarian, you go through high school, <laughs> and then you go through four years of undergraduate degree. Um, and then at that point, sometimes people will take a little bit of time off because when you apply to vet school, you need to have a certain number of hours of animal experience. And sometimes people need to have some time off after university to gain that. Um, once you get the animal experience, you apply to vet school and that's another four years. And then after vet school, if you want to be a general practitioner, you can just go straight into practice. If you want to specialize in zoo and wildlife medicine, usually you will then do an internship in dog and cat medicine or equine medicine or sometimes exotic animal medicine, um, at least one year internship, sometimes two one year internships, and then a uh, three year residency um, at a zoo institution. So someplace like the National Zoo, um, which provides a residency program is sort of a stepping stone to becoming a zoo and wildlife veterinarian. If you're interested in going to a career with uh, whether it's as a zookeeper, a veterinary technician, or a veterinarian, uh, do good in school. Um, keep loving animals because that's one of the best ways to do it. Thank you so much for joining and learning about some unusual careers like a veterinary technician and a veterinarian. It was so fascinating to learn what they do when a bird feels under the feather, that they don't call a ambulance when the hogs get sick, and they may prescribe a snake an antihistamine. Thanks for watching.